go back to the roots, just like finger paints or some shit. You know? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, finger paints would be uh, be super fun to get back into. I haven't I haven't done finger painting in so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> be good for like a really big size. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, I mean, well, actually, I can't big, always say, say that because, like, I would do, like, I do these paintings where I do, like, you know, a, a bright yellow and an orange underneath, mm-hmm. and then I'd put, like, a, uh, you know, like, a, sometimes i mix it with the silicone, and then I'd put, like, a nice, like, purple or something over it, and then I'd mm. finger paint over it. Oh, nice. So, like, you know, the yellow would show up yeah. after it was dried a little bit. Uh-huh. Because, you know, with that silicone, once it's dry a little bit, it just becomes almost like a crust, so you can kind of, like, put little designs, you know, do, like, cave-style drawings, shit like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's something uh, super simple about finger painting, you know, it's almost like, uh, yeah, it's almost like an innocence kind of a thing, it brings yeah. you back. Yeah, totally, you know. I know people are so hardened of everything that happens, and <clears throat> everything that we know about on the internet now. It's, it's why everybody's so stressed. Oh, absolutely. Actually, There's I was just so much going on. I was talking <laughs> to a buddy of mine, and we were talking about it's just like an information input overload. It's just too much all the time. The news cycle happens so quick now. There's so much coming in, and there's not enough going out. Yep. And, uh, I mean, people can't keep it all straight. It all just kind of blends into, like, one big, like, never-ending noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very hard to focus. Yeah. A lot of things. Yeah. You know. Well, that's why I try and, uh, I don't know, it's just a little rule of mine. Like, when I am painting or mm-hmm. doing something, you know, creative, I just don't have my cell phone on me. Yeah, you know, totally. I, I go compl- through jams like that, and I'll just bust that shit out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Work just on completely it till I'm turn happy. it out, man. Yeah. You know, put it in a... Uh, oh, yeah. Leave it in the other room. That's it, Actually, that's a good thing to do uh, before going to bed, too. Yeah. Either, uh, you know... Uh, plug in your phone across the room so it's not right by your bedside. Mm, yep. And uh, which is, you know, good for when you have to get up in the morning. You actually will be yeah. able to have to, have to get up and walk over to turn off your alarm. And, you, you know, wake up. dude, yeah. you, you, it, it just, it yep. kind of sucks at first, mm-hmm. but, you know, later on you feel appreciative because yeah. you did it. Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I'm not a morning person either. Like, I'm terrible about it. I, I can be, depending if it's a very nice summer day and it's yeah. cold in sunshine. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I wake up at fucking 9 a.m., no problem. Even 8 a.m. sometimes. Oh, Depend. man. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just something about waking up to a sunny day, though, yeah. that, that, like, you know, gives you a little Gotta bit of extra it. strength. Oh, yeah. You know, just, like, uh, you know, makes you want to get up, gives you a little bit of motivation. Mm-hmm. As yeah. opposed to, like, you know, you get up, it's raining, it's just groggy out. You don't have any motivation to do absolutely anything. Chicago but winters? Yeah, oh, God, <laughs> tell me about it. And I get so cranky in the wintertime, too, just because of the lack of vitamin D from the sun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, you know, the last few winters up here, besides that, like, two weeks last year, that mm-hmm. was just, like, what, negative 30? Yeah. Besides those two weeks, it was just, you know, a pretty, like, consistent, even pale blah. You know, it wasn't, like, super cold, wasn't super snowy, it was just a gray blah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know, after a few months, that can wane on you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, do you tend to do uh, more painting done, uh, you know, in the winter months when you're kind of, like, you're hunkered down, or, like, more out in the summer when you're out and about at, like, festivals and stuff? Well, I've never been to a festival that I would draw at, which is honestly something I really wanted to get into. Oh, yeah. Last year, but yeah, it's yeah. perfect now because there's a lot of people that have come to my life where that's going to be possible. Yeah, man. It's great. Yeah, man. Well, uh, Intrinsic Arts is always looking for live mm-hmm. painters, so you know, anytime you want to like hit up a fest, yeah. let me know, dude. We'll that's get you cool. in. It, it's going to be interesting because I'm going to have my tablet doing that. You know? You know, uh, actually, one of the artists I'm going to uh, have uh, on here um, either probably either next week or the week after. It'll be a few episodes after you. Yeah. But uh, what he did was uh, he would bring his tablet to festivals and do the same thing. Nice. But he'd like plug it into a little projector. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. like you know, so he could sit and live project and you know, yeah, yeah, which sure. would be super cool. Fuck yeah. Uh, I used to do that with uh, uh, cartoons. Nice. Uh, at uh, well, not uh, cartoons, just like little, uh, little, little doodles on an overhead uh-huh. projector. Yeah, you know. So I'd start off like doing like a little comic strip, and then I'd fill it out, and, like uh-huh. little by little, would yeah, uh, nice. you know, 
could become a whole story over the course of the hour. Then you spray it down to another little story. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I don't know, man. There's something about that makes it a little bit more interactive. It does. Yeah, it does. Because you're making use of that energy on the spot. That's what I think about live painting. You know, it's really awesome. Well, well, yeah. And, and live painting, too. Like, when you're in the moment, like, you know, people are actually, like, sitting in, like, you know, focusing their intent on it. Yeah. Um, you know, it just makes that connection to the artwork so much better for you mm-hmm. because, um, you know, you kind of like feed off of it. I mean, well, same, same as like the way a musician would feed off of That's a crowd, right? exactly what I do with my art, actually. Like, I end up listening to music, and I have this uh, this really cool belt that's like a vibration belt. Oh, okay. It hooks up via audio. Yeah, yeah. And it sends the bass signals. And you really? Wear it, like, on your diaphragm, and then there's another one behind on your back on the other point. Oh man, now see that's got to be great for breathing exercises. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's great for that. But uh, you know, they're listening to like, uh, you know, any electronic music that's yeah. super bassy. Yeah, yeah. Having that, even like very symphonic music is perfect because you have those really low notes that you don't necessarily hear, but the if it's a really good audio, you know, that's going into it, they're not going to crop out anything. It's not going to be compressed audio. Mm-hmm. You'll have a lot of those bass notes in there, but you can't hear it in the headphones necessarily. Hmm. And then you'll feel it. And it's like, whoa, that's crazy. Huh. Yeah. Man, I've never heard of that. What are they called? Uh, that one's called Wooger. Wooger. Yeah. Oh, there's no way I'm going to remember that. W-O-O-J-E-R. <laughs> but, I mean, that sounds that's super cool. cool. Now, now, what what kind of music do you prefer to, to paint to usually? Like something that's like more... Uh, uh, you know, more down tempo, a little bit like trancey, or you do mm-hmm. like want something more upbeat and kind of grooving. It's honestly completely random. Like I've maxed out my Spotify about like four or five times now, and I have to just start <laughs> unsaving everything and just saving it to playlists. You know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I probably have several hundred thousand songs saved, but I can't save them anymore, obviously. So, as as far as songs saved to playlists, I guess. Huh. So I listen to a lot of different music. Well, I guess. Uh, well, I guess the question is then: it's not what kind of music do you listen to, but what you've been listening to recently? Yeah, recently I've been listening to this band called Jungle, and this uh, they're a very, very cool band. They have like a I don't even know like a seven piece or something like that, and all of them kind of sing at the same time, and it's very funky. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, very cool, but I've been listening to a lot of funk, I guess, recently. Now, see, that's what I prefer to paint, too. Mm-hmm. Like, nice. if I, like, I love the funk. I need something with, like, a good bass line to keep my, like, strokes in place, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, hell yeah. You could do, like, quick little flicks, like, to the music. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 for sure. Perfect. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Now, uh, actually, I did a, a couple of paintings that... Uh, I would I would listen to uh, there were portraits of certain musicians and mm-hmm. I would only listen to their music as I was doing it. Yeah. It kind of like uh, I don't know, it kind of makes that experience um, more personable in a way, mm-hmm. you know, because you kind of like uh, could pick up techniques right. from like the music of that song, uh-huh. like you know, discover new stuff that yeah. uh, you know you didn't have before. Right. I love that that about art is that uh you know it's just something that like even if you don't have any classes like just by doing it you can just pick up little things different ways to move your wrist stuff like that Mm -hmm. yeah right exactly it just works out you know if you're getting into something the vibe is always the same yeah and that's the thing that's beautiful it's all of us as humans get into something we all do yeah we all get into something but when you're feeling that we all have that same feeling you know it's a beautiful thing about art yeah and so, so what may so let me ask you, what made you want to do the psychedelic artwork? Was there like a certain experience that kind of pushed you in that direction? Uh, yeah, basically, Photoshop now has symmetry functions in it. Okay. Where as you're drawing, it will uh, put it over those symmetry points automatically. What? I actually uh, brought my tablet actually. So oh man, sure. you're gonna have to show me later. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Wait, so it's what, was very that in the, easy uh, to make awesome mandala stuff. Yeah, was that just in the most recent edition? Uh, yeah, it's Adobe CC one Creative Cloud. Okay, okay. Yeah, so just the newer, you know, crappy big ass plan you got to pay for, but yeah, you know, yeah, but I use <laughs> most of them anyway. So well, I mean, it's all good. a feature, a feature like that though, man, like mm-hmm. that's um, dude, it's it's great. Th- that's worth it. Yeah, that's worth it because yeah, yeah. oh man. You, you can make do... custom symmetry too. Like it's crazy. Yeah. 
Now, do you like, uh, how does that work with like anchor points? Do you like uh, put certain anchor points and then like stretch out certain um, shapes around it and then like just like kind of pull it? Uh, no, that would be awesome. That would be fucking cool, but no, it's not quite that way yet. Who knows <laughs> oh, where it might I'm be hoping somewhere. for it. I'm hoping that. You, know, it, you probably could do that with a combination of layers, yeah, honestly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because all the features are there, honestly. You know, you just got to do them separately. It's not together. <laughs> you know, it, it basically shows guides. Yeah. And then those guides are the symmetry points that it will, you know, uh, symmetrically draw over. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's what I've been using a lot. And uh, I started in black and white, just trying to get a hold of the, you know, mechanics of it, basically. And then I ended up uh, drawing my first color one, which was Anxiety. Okay. Which is this really, like, scally kind of brown pollution kind of color. Because I was very, I had a lot of anxiety just starting. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just like, ah, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. It's a new it, thing. And then, it's like, just like and that, that, that's like a such a good visualization of it too because like anxiety just makes you feel gunked up yeah dude and there's like these eyes that are kind of like dripping into the center it's yeah, like a yeah. four symmetrical you know four point symmetry kind of thing oh huh, that's it's like cool like four corners you know so is it like dripping over the eye kind of it's very abstract you know yeah obviously but uh yeah that's how I would describe it it's kind of like like kind of fluidy very fluid kind of mixture that you don't know if it's water or gas or what the hell's going on but the eyes definitely you know just looking at them and you know the human response to seeing two eyes is always going to make a face oh yeah you know their emotion right away and the emotion is there and i was just like okay well i'm gonna do another one i just didn't stop (laughs) i see i love that because like it hits that like uncanny valley part of the brain to where like it allows you to project what you want to onto it yeah. And, uh, you know, at, at that point, you know, going down to, like, the base emotion you want to express, it's going to be done with color. Yeah. Because people are going to be filling in the rest. Right. So right. you just got to use that motion to your mm-hmm. advantage. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, and then I started throwing color in there, and I I really love using color. Oh, yeah. But I was so used to doing it very realistically, mm-hmm. that breaking out into this, I'm just going to throw these colors randomly everywhere and just go until i'm happy with it yeah i could always undo i could always erase if i wanted to but yeah yeah it's yeah. going to transform into something well and it's always random well and then that's know? and that's like just the advantage of yeah. you know being able to do uh do it in like an illustrating program mm-hmm. is that you can be more in the moment because you know i mean you know they have they have the phrase uh you know well i'm not married to the idea like anything you do you're not married to right you can just right. click a button and it'll completely undo it mm-hmm Yep. Which, uh, man, that's a lot of power as an artist. It is a lot of power. <laughs> I mean, it lets you be a lot more precise with your yeah. vision. Well, you know, going back to that perfectionist thing, right, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now I can be very precise in just the use of color, I guess, and the use of line work, as long as I'm happy with that. Yeah. And just the mixture, and if it does something to the eye. I, I, I focus a lot on, like, uh, like what would those be? illusions basically you know when you're looking at a certain pattern of you know an overlapping pattern mm-hmm. it will make some kind of weird thing that would happen you know yeah yeah kind of like uh oh man what were proper those words, uh man. you know I, I i can't think of the proper word offhand yeah. but it's like uh what used to be in those old highlights magazines you mm-hmm. know what i mean it have something there but then you know if you uh, gazed off of it you know it would just blend in and it would look like something else yeah and there is this uh this one I think it's Don't Let Go and Breathe. Or no, it's Let Go and Breathe, not Don't Let Go and Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that would be bad. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that one. But like, because uh, it's got basically four rotating parts on the corners. And then in the center, it makes something completely different. Like there's, uh, you know, I'll describe it like there's these shapes that appear and grow and then they disappear. You hmm. know, they get absorbed into the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. Yep. Yeah, f- yeah shapes that just kind of like blend in and fade away into the other designs. Mm-hmm. Just because they're at the corner of yeah. like the thing, you know. Well, that and it makes it, uh, I don't know, it may- makes it feel more alive when you have mm-hmm. constant changes in that because. Yeah, totally. I don't know, like, you know, when you're putting those little, um, those little things in there, it almost allows for them to be like Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. 
to where, you know, you could probably look at the same piece, you know, two or three times down the line yeah. and, you know, you're going to find something new in it. Yeah. And it's going to be like, oh, okay. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like watching a, uh, Tarantino movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. He you're just never going to see like, it the same way twice. Yeah, he, yeah. And he always puts those little Easter eggs in uh -huh. there that if like, you know, you're actually watching out for it, you could see, see you know, the red apple cigarette, you know, wherever the case may yeah, be. Yeah. 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 But, uh, I don't know. I love, uh, I love when movies do that too. Mm -hmm. That's, uh. I don't know. I was a big, big fan of uh, a lot. Well, being a comic book guy, you probably watch like those YouTube videos that just have like the Easter eggs that are in like Marvel mm. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just put so much stuff in there. Just uh, yeah, they do. They really do. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. It just like it just goes to show you when you put someone in charge that's passionate about the material. Mm -hmm. uh, same way, you know, an artist is passionate about their their piece that they're doing right then and there. Yep. Like, if you're passionate about it, like, you want to add those little um, those little intrinsic things yeah. that uh, bring out more character later on. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the more you watch, the more you just love the characters. Yeah, I think that's what makes art lasting in the long, yeah. in the long term. Yep. There's... Uh, captured that emotion that all humans just it's a human thing a human response to yeah you know, yeah what is happening that's captured yeah I, th I think that's um i don't know i think that's the reason why you know people even even you know little kids with finger paints are expressive beings yeah. like they're trying to capture that moment right over and over again mm -hmm. and i feel like we try and capture that moment with a lot of things in our lives yeah yeah, that's true. Even the things we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, like uh, when people project their problems. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's unhealthy projection, which is when they don't sure. realize they're doing it. Yeah, but then yeah. what you were doing with your artwork, you know, with that anxiety piece, like right. you were projecting yeah. that feeling onto that canvas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, I don't. Know, it's almost like you know you're bringing up it in a way that you can face it and like, you know, an, ob an actual objective standpoint as well yeah. as it, you know, being subjective representation yeah, of what exactly. you're trying to e express. But it's like, right. you know, you work it out onto something mm -hmm. and then, yeah. you know, whether you, uh, you know, decide to burn it, get right. rid of it, stick uh -huh. it in the closet, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, every time you look at it, it's going to bring you back to that place that you were right. and remind you of how far you've come. Yeah, totally. You know? And it was a very uh, quick piece too that he made. It probably took an hour or so. Yeah. You know, it's not very, not very difficult at all. But it was just completely random. I didn't plan that it was going to be anxiety. It just I drew and anxiety came out of it. Yeah. And it was totally the feeling that I had at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's funny that I expressed that so well in it, <laughs> and it just caught me off guard. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep drawing. I guess that was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I might be good at actually capturing emotion in a very abstract way yeah it like makes you, know? you feel relieved you yeah. know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah it's interesting so keep it on <laughs>